Um, we did the round heated plate in a previous recording. Uh, that is a partial differential equation, boundary value problem in cylindrical coordinates. Um, we converted, come on, there we go, um, a Laplacian equation in rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, in R and theta. Um, and when we did that, we did uh, the product method, separated variables, and we got these two ordinary differential equations. This one we've seen before. This one was new. It's a certain Cauchy Euler equation, something we have a canned solution, general solution. Um, and then we applied implicit boundary conditions. One was the plate theta goes all the way around. And uh, so the solution for, for the theta function has to be two pi periodic. And that gave us these eigenvalues and eigenfunction. Zero is a valid eigenvalue, and it's corresponding eigenfunction constant. And then the positive integer squared, and these other uh, eigenvalues. And here's the corresponding eigenfunction. Other implicit boundary condition was boundedness. We don't let our solution go off to infinity over the range of the variable. In this case, the range of the variable is the R variable and it goes from zero to some finite value, right? It's the uh, radius of the plate. So zero is the troublesome part here. Here were the corresponding solutions to the R equations for those eigenvalues. At R equals zero, Natural log goes to minus infinity, that's unbounded, so we set C to zero. And this R to the minus an integer also blows up at R equals zero. We set C4 to zero. We're left with these eigenfunctions or these functions. Yeah. Then we put it together, um, set it equal to a uh, Expanded version of the boundary of the explicit boundary condition using, in this case, uh, the full Fourier series, trigonometric Fourier. That's a review of the previous problem. Now, what if it's an infinite plane, which is this thing here? It's a hole in the middle, but then it goes out to infinity. <clears throat> Everything is the same in this case. Same. Equations to be solved, so you're going to get, you're going to get the same ordinary differential equation. It goes all the way around in theta, so theta solution has to be two pi periodic. All that stays the same. What changes is the boundedness condition on R. In this case, R equals zero is not included on the plate. This is not this white part is not part of the plate. We do have to worry about out at infinity. As the radius goes out to infinity, it can't blow up. So where do we have, where's our R solution? Here's the R solutions. What if, as R goes to infinity, the natural log goes to infinity. So again, we have to set C2 to zero. As R goes to infinity, this guy's okay. He goes to zero. He stays fine, but this guy goes to infinity, he blows up. So we set C3 to zero. So everything's the same here, except this, this function here, for the, the Rs for the positive integers are R to the minus N instead of R to the N. And the rest of it, we assemble pretty much the same way. Here we have the R to the minus N here. So when we match coefficients to the Fourier coefficients, um, we have this the minus n big A sub n is equal to two A sub n. So we get slightly different what big A's and big N's are. One other one. What if you got a finite plate with a hole in the middle? 
Again, it goes all the way around. You're going to get the same ordinary differential equation because it's the same little prof. And theta goes all the way around. So we're going to apply the two pi periodicity again. So all that stays the same. But the R equations, now we're not, we don't have implicit conditions, we have explicit. This outer boundary, the U is zero, and on the inner boundary, it's this function of theta. So let's look at the, uh, the lambda equals zero case first for the R equation. Here's the general solution for the R equation. On this outer edge, R equals B. So we plug in B for R, we get this, which gives us a relationship between C1 and C2, or we can plug in for C1 here. Here's the solution where we plug in for C1. We could re express that this way. And the log of something minus the log of something else is just the log of that ratio. So we have this as a function with some constant as well. So this is the function for R uh, for the case of uh, lambda equals zero. Now what about positive lambdas? Um, here was the general solution for that case. And we'll plug in B for R. This relationship, that equals zero because uh, that was the boundary condition, outer edge. Um, that gives us a relationship between C3 and C4, or I can express C4 in terms of C3. So I'll rewrite this solution again. Here's what I have. I'm going to do some algebraic manipulation here. And you can follow this or look at it later, but I can rewrite the R function for the positive eigenvalues this way, it'll be some scalar multiple of this. So now I can put everything together. Um, here's for the lambda equals zero case, the theta equation was just a constant. And here's for the positive uh, eigenvalues. Here was the theta eigenvalues, eigenfunctions rather. And here's the corresponding um, R function. I summed them all up to give me my general solution. So now I've matched everything except this inner edge um, condition. That's where we match it to uh, an, expand, an expansion of a uh, Fourier expansion. So that, that inner edge was where R equals A. Let's see here. Here was the general solution before we matched that inner edge. The inner edge is where R equals A. So we plug in R for A, here's what you get. And that has to equal that function. It's the explicit boundary condition there. So we expand that F data in terms of a Fourier, full Fourier series. Um, recognize that, let's see, when you match it to a Fourier series, the P needs to equal pi because we're looking at the N theta here. We wanted to match this format. Here's the general format for the, for the Fourier series. So to get it to match this, we need P to equal pi. That's how we to expand by. And the rest of it then is, uh, is matching coefficient. This thing, big A sub zero, natural log of A over B has to equal this Fourier coefficient, A little a zero over two, et cetera. Uh, e sub n times this whole mess equals this little a sub n. B sub n times that mass equals this little b sub n. Anyway, we match coefficients. That's kind of normal stuff. And this summarizes the solution. We had this already, but now we have formulas for the big A's and B's. Um,
So when you when you don't when boundedness doesn't come into play, like in this case, you don't really use that implicit boundary condition. We use the explicit boundary condition. If I go all the way back to the original, what if theta didn't go all the way around? You could say it was just a quarter plate. Then you would not use two pi periodicity. You would use the explicit boundary conditions on this edge, and another explicit boundary condition would have to be given to you on this edge. So if that were the case, you would use the explicit boundary conditions, not the implicit boundary conditions. Anyway, I think that ends uh, our boundary value problems in polar coordinates.